You been watching much of these playoffs on TV, or you been too busy? I've been trying to. If my hotel TV gets the channel, who do you like? You like uh, the Dodgers or the Rays? I like the under uh, the underdog. I think that's the Rays. So I'm I'm rooting for the Rays. All right. Uh, just as you continue playing, um, I mean, how much more comfortable are you getting with just the grind that Major League Baseball and, and it just seemingly never ends? You know, the season may be over on the field for MLB teams for the most part, but obviously guys like you are, are still grinding. Have you settled into that or is this just kind of an old hat thing for you at this point? Yeah, I've always really enjoyed the grind. Even at college, you know, a college fall ball uh, was a grind. And then the season, it's not 162 games, but it's a, uh, it's a good sample size to, you know, really feel it out and know how to take care of your body. But this is nothing new to me. Um, I'm having a great time doing it. And just one more quick follow. Uh, I just got off a of zoom with Jake Cronenworth, um, you know, guy out there in San Diego doing his thing. When you see young players, rookies uh, have big impacts for their teams, how do you do you do you visualize yourself being able to do that? Is that something that you think about when you see other guys do it? Of course, you know I'm always uh, thinking a step ahead. So when I was even when I was in high school, I was thinking of myself in professional baseball, and in college, I was thinking of myself in major league baseball, and it was just um, this thing where I just always pictured myself, you know, bottom of the ninth, two outs, bases loaded, three two count, and I'm ready to go and kind of treat every repetition like that. And then when you get to that, that point in your career, you're, uh, you're, it's not like a deer in the headlights. You're ready to go. Thanks, man. Thanks, Justin. Next we'll go to Jason Beck from MLB.com. Yeah. Hey Spencer, thanks for doing this. Um, we saw a highlight on Twitter of your home run today uh, and wondering what the pitch was and what it feel like, what did it feel like to, uh, to go deep like that today? I, it was a 2-2 count, I believe, and it was just a fastball inside, pulled my hands in, and, yeah, it felt great. What does it feel like facing pitchers from other teams as opposed to two, three months of inner squads? Way better than facing your own guys, I'll tell you that. I, I was getting sick of facing Tigers. I wanted to put the hurting on somebody else. But, uh, no, it's, it's kind of weird, actually. You know, it's been a while since I've had a, seen another team in the other dugout, but it's it uh, feels more real, and I, I really enjoy it. I was going to ask, is there something that about facing guys from other teams, even in this type of setting, that gets the competitive juices flowing that's different than what, uh, than what summer camp or the alternate training site was like? No doubt. Um, you always have that little extra adrenaline even if there's, you know, 15 people in the stands, you're playing against someone else that you don't really know. And it, it feels like a real game and real adrenaline comes. And it's, it's easier for me to, to play in that situation. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Next we'll go to Cody Stavenhagen from The Athletic. Hey, Spencer. Good to see you. Um, Man, just what have these whole past few months been like since being drafted, since heading to the the alternate site? I mean, what did you kind of get out of that experience? So much fun. I uh, met a lot of great guys in the organization that um, I know that will, you know, play in the league a long time. And hopefully I, you know, keep that friendship with them and uh, that camaraderie. But it was it was really different and weird and strange. But at the same time, I got a lot out of it. And, I had a lot of fun. And I really embraced it. Yeah. How do you kind of have to program your mind to, to come each day and, and make sure those days were productive? It's not hard to get myself to go to the baseball field every day. So that's, it was, a uh, it wasn't really that difficult. I'll be honest. All right. For sure. I mean, what makes you say that or what made it so easy for you? I, I just love playing so much. And then I'm a professional. I don't have homework to do when I get back home. So, you know, it's my job and it's, it's literally living the dream. So, Yeah, that, that's a good point, a good way to look at it. How cool is it to be, number one, not a student anymore, but number two, even if it's not totally ideal, you, you're, you're a pro now. Yeah, you're playing baseball and you're, you know, making a living doing it. It's pretty special. It's, it's a lot of fun. All right, for sure. And then last week, uh, Riley Green told us about you guys have kind of become friends, riding to the park together and stuff. What's it been like hanging around him? 
no doubt. Uh, Riley is the best. I, he's such a great kid, and I feel like the same age as him. And, but he, he was drafted out of high school just a year before me, and he's, he's really good. I could knock on the, the wall right here and say hi to him because that's where the hotel room is. But, uh, yeah, he's a great dude, and he gives me a ride to the field every day. He gets some Starbucks or something before go eat dinner all the time. It's, uh, it's a really good friendship we got going. All right, very cool. Thank you, Spencer. Thanks, Cody. Next, we'll go to Matt Shepard from Fox Sports Detroit. Hey, Spencer. Nice to see you. Um, just to build off that, who are some of the others who you've connected with? We talked with Daniel Cabrera, and he talked about how uh, easygoing you and Riley are to, to get along with. Who else have you uh, kind of bonded with down there? A lot of the guys. Everyone's, there's no bad blood uh, in the Tigers locker room, I'll tell you, but um, mostly Dingler, Dylan Dingler, great guy. Um, he hasn't been out here yet, uh, but – you know, I keep in touch with him. Uh, we became good friends at the alternate site. And then even guys like uh, Jake Rogers, Frank Schwindel, Brennan Dixon, I came close with in Toledo. But the guys here um, right now with me at Instructs are, you know, Ryan Kreidler, Andre Lipsius, Packard. Um, yeah, it's a good group of guys. Cabrera talked um, about envisioning this young core um, getting Detroit back to its winning ways. How much do you guys talk about that? Or is that too far ahead for you to even envision right now? No, we, t we talk about it. I and mean, you know, it's pretty special, you know, it's, it's real. And I forgot, I left out workman, Gage workman. He's a yeah. really good friend of mine from ASTU and he's looking uh, very, very good right now. Um, but yeah, we talk about, it. we talked about it today when we were talking about um, it rained a little bit in tram Alan Trammell was like, hey, you know, you're going to have to deal with uh, a wet ball every now and then. We said, you know, especially in October. And that kind of gave me some goosebumps. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, when, how much of the Tigers did you watch while you were in Toledo? And, and what was your impressions overall of, the, of this past year's team? I caught most of the games um, in my apartment. And there, it was fun to watch because it was like – you're just playing. You'd see a guy get called up from the alternate site. You show up to the field, their locker's empty. You're like, oh, God, I, got, I better watch the game tonight. They're probably getting the start. Um, but watching the, watching the team, they're young. They, they worked hard. It was a tough year. But, I mean, I'm proud of them, and I'm happy uh, for all the guys that made their debuts and had, had good years. All right, lastly, uh, just to, to kind of off Justin's point when he asked you about, you know, the current games, you, you see how these teams play. You see how the Dodgers go deep in counts. You see how they don't chase much. You see how Tampa uh, relies on, on pitching and relies on the home runs. Um, you've always been a player who does that too, is, is, isn't afraid to go deep into counts. Is that, is that mindset being reinforced on a regular basis? And if so, how is it being reinforced to you and some of the younger players? No doubt. Uh, we're not here to just either hit a home run or strike out. We're, we're all ball players, and we pride ourselves on that in our approach to know, to know when you get to two strikes, you're choking up, you're punching something the other way, um, staying alive because the next guy up. And I think, obviously, pitching wins champ championships ultimately in defense, but you need, you need to score runs. And I'm pretty sure the top, you know, five – top six teams that were left were probably – top 10 in on-base percentage yeah. or on-base plus slugging this year um, to, you know, all winning teams get on base and score runs and not just strike it out or hitting homers. Stay healthy. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Chef. Next we'll go to Tyler Davis from the Detroit Free Press. Hey, man, um, I know that you kind of talked about it a little bit. Um, already but it, with, with your homer today uh was it just you know see and react to the fastball was there anything that you noticed in the count that maybe gave you a leg up there on that pitch uh yeah um it was a two-two count so my two-strike approach is always sitting on a heater away and then if you uh sit on a heater away and try to hit over the second baseman's head your eyes will see that off-speed pitch and then the inside fastball is just a reaction and um, you reacted and obviously got it, got it in the air and got it on the barrel that went out. But um, and it also helps to have Riley on 
on first base because he has some speed. And you got to think that the pitcher doesn't want to spike a curveball or throw a curveball because he could be stealing. And that's just a free bag for Riley. So uh, it kind of gives you more confidence that he's going to throw a heater. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then just uh, as a follow up there, generally, um, you know, you said that it, it's not it's not hard to get motivated to come play ball every day. Um, but are there adjustments that you have to make in a preparation sense? Uh, is there have you noticed any uptick in whether uh, uptick in competition, whether it's the type of pitches you're seeing, the strike zone, the coaching? Just just what is the what has the adjustment been like? What has really opened your eyes since you've joined pro ball? Everything's more uh, elite, you know. Even the uh, even the guys in instructional league, they're not like the college pitchers. They they have a little more fuzz on their fastball and a little tighter make on their breaking ball. But um, yeah, the coaching's obviously professional. Uh, everyone I'm playing with is really good. Everyone on my team is was the best player at their college. Um, so it's kind of like the, the cream of the crop, you know, it's, uh, it's really fun to have that competition. It just makes you better when you're playing with and against the best of the best. Thanks. Thanks, Ella. Uh, next we'll go to Lynn Henning from the Detroit News. Spencer, can you hear me? I can hear you. A technological triumph finally here on this end. Um, Spence, can you take us through uh, the at-bats today? And, and Ben, maybe you can uh, help us figure out exactly where that ball landed because uh, based on Spencer's eyes, it looked like it had a lot of altitude. But uh, maybe between the two of us here, we can get a little sense for the uh, trajectory of that home run you hit in the first at-bat. The wind was howling a little bit. Uh, so I wasn't positive it was going because I believe it was a 39-degree launch angle at like 104 off the bat. So it wasn't a, a no doubter, but I, I thought I got it. So it ended up on the berm then, okay. Yeah. Um, what about your other at bat, Spencer? Uh, just one today because uh, it started dumping, right? Oh. Tried to move to the turf field uh, on the backside, but it just kept pouring. So umpires called it. It was a short day. We only played about, you know, in one and a half innings. Okay. Your bats have been, again, you've either been hitting stuff on the nose or you've been getting walks. Um, I don't know how gratifying uh, those at bats have been, and I'm not sure how much difference in the pitching that you're seeing compared with what you would have seen at Toledo, but maybe you can help on that a little. Obviously, the pitching in Toledo is going to be better. They're double-A, triple-A, some big leaguer arms. But the guys here are so good, but they're, they're in instructional league to work on something, whether it's command, whether it's, you know, a third pitch or their slider or whatever it is. Um, everyone's here to work on something. So uh, definitely Toledo pitching is better, but it's, they're still uh, professionals, and they're, they're here for a reason. You, uh, again – and this is nothing new. Your bats that I saw in um, Phoenix were not a whole lot different from the bats I've seen uh, in Lakeland, uh, or at least did last week. Uh, again, power, um, you're, you're hitting something uh, on the teeth or you're taking a walk. Um, where do you feel you are here uh, in terms of progress? I feel like I, I feel great up at the plate. My swing feels good. I feel balanced and uh, it's, a, it's like an aggressive, selective approach. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to swing until my eyes tell me not to. And that's the way I've always been. Um, and, and the other key question, Spencer, you haven't had a lot of chances down at third base, but uh, how's that going? I love it. It's a lot of fun. And um, I like having something to work on, you know. Uh, no one's perfect. And I, I like working hard. So having – Third base as a like another stepping stone to get somewhere is um, I like it a lot and it's it's going well. Tram's an unbelievable and Davo, uh, they're unbelievable coaches and uh, very positive and they know how to coach at the the highest level, which is the best part. Yeah, that's just real, real fast. Two quick ones and I'll get out of here. But 
Uh, do you feel like this is a position at which you've dropped anchor? No doubt. Yeah. I mean, uh, give me a couple more in-game ground balls and some more repetitions and practice, and I'm, I'm right there with the best of them, I believe. So the, the conversion has really been comfortable. In terms of comfort levels, playing third and first base, you want to offer a little comparison there? Uh, I played three years in college at first, so I was, I was a 10 out of 10 there, and at third base, I'm probably – eight out of 10 right now, but I'm, I'm working hard to be a 10 out of 10. And one more, how does it feel to, uh, to have kicked uh, Workman off uh, third base and what do you see he's doing at shortstop? The only reason he was a third baseman at Arizona State was because our shortstop went. Leaky, I know, out. yeah. So uh, he's a shortstop at heart and everyone here is really amazed at why the hell he was playing third at ASU. And I was like, trust me, you should have seen our shortstop. But Workman's an athlete, he's a switch hitter, has power, great arm, good feet. I mean, pretty much everything you ask for in a shortstop and a baseball player he has. So um, I don't feel that bad for kicking him out. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Uh, if anyone has one or two last ones, go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, we'll go to Nick Austin from tigers.com next. Yeah, I was just curious um, if you could talk to, I mean, you know, people have been impressed with your physical tools for a long time. Can you talk about uh, what you have done or, or how have you, you've seen your, um, your mental game improve since being with the Tigers? I think it's just uh, repetition for the most part. Uh, everyone becomes more comfortable where they are with repetition. You know, you stay ready so you don't have to get ready is what I like to, you know, say sometimes is is just when you are stepping up to the plate or you're getting a ground ball knowing that you've seen a million of them in your life and you've seen thousands of them you know that season that off season it makes it a you know a lot more comfortable and um peace of mind knowing that you're ready to take on whatever comes your way on the field i'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit with, with this one um Speaking collectively for the guys down at Instructs, what is the collective mindset of, of the group down there, in your opinion? We're kind of embracing it. You know, it's 90 degrees, feels like 104 with the humidity. We're kind of embracing the suck and uh, building good friendships and, you know, having the most fun we possibly can during a pandemic at Instructional League in Lakeland, Florida, if you, if you can feel that. And then, you know, in, in these past Zoom conferences with some of your, uh, your fellow Tigers and coaches and stuff like that, everyone has spoke very highly of you as a person. Can you just talk about what that means to you that, you know, these guys, it, I don't think it's lip service by any, any stretch. No, I, I pride myself on being a great person before anything else because um, off the baseball field, um, my, my, training, my trainer at ASU always said, like, your tombstone is not going to say stud baseball player, um, stud athlete, blah, 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 have your stats, your career stats on your headstone. It's going to say, you know, family man, great person, friendly, funny, stuff like that. So I took that to heart and I'm like, wow, like it's like life isn't about hitting homers. It's about being a good person and making an impact on other people and having fun because we only got one shot at this thing and, you know, you don't come out alive. <laughs> and, and finally, um, last one for me, just talk about the biggest improvement you've seen in your game since being with the organization and what is the, the number one goal for you from this point, you know, maybe up to, to spring training. Uh, biggest improvement by far is uh, at third base. Uh, if you look at my first day of summer camp to where I am now, it's, feels like night and day and uh this off season I, i'm gonna take it to heart and try to be a, a gold glover because you know anything other than that is isn't acceptable thank you man all right thanks uh thanks torque uh we've got cody in the room with us now so we'll uh, we'll let you go and transition over to him but appreciate it thanks spencer